Welcome back. Uh, all right, so we were talking about wisdom. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so just probably give you a couple of examples on uh, you know why wisdom is important, right? Uh, these are real examples, real life situations that happened. Uh, one was, uh, I think you may have heard of it, uh, the rise and fall of Mars Hill. Uh, this pastor was a wonderful pastor. Uh, he started this church, Mars Hill, a uh, wonderful man of God. Uh, and the church started growing uh, very quickly, right? Uh, and uh, uh, there were thousands of people. And all of a sudden, there was this huge growth. And uh, you can probably go online, I think, um, there are many articles on uh, Christianity Today, uh, preachers.com. Uh, so there are many websites where you can just go and read about this and how, uh, you know, this wonderful church, which eventually became about 40,000 40, odd people. Uh, at the end, what happened was everything just broke down. Everything fell apart. And the ministry came down to nothing now the reason was the leaders did not act in wisdom uh, i forget his name uh leader of mars hill but um uh, and the the main pastor he was a very rude very arrogant way of speaking he loved the lord right there's this anointing upon his life he was a good teacher but he was very arrogant he was very abusive in his words, in his actions, and uh, eventually, it all it was you know it, it was bottled up for a long time. So if you go online, type in Marcel, you'll see some of his early sermons where uh, he's really teaching well. But somewhere in between, he was he got to be very abusive, very uh, you know like you know abusing the congregation and abusing other ministries and uh, talking badly about people, and there was no wisdom in what was happening right there was no accountability also and the whole ministry came to nothing right uh, there's another ministry i'll leave the name unnamed uh, the i won't share the name but this is the ministry that happened in the west uh, where you know uh, this, this wonderful man of god he started off you know just with the fire of god the anointing just with the heart to bless people and to do the work of the ministry so he started a church the church began to grow expand growing 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 um, and he was a wonderful teacher of the word of god right he would really expound truths um, and he he was somebody who would you know he loved hermeneutics which is you know understanding scriptures in its context so he was really a wonderful teacher wrote many books as well uh, but something happened that um uh, you know in in the us they have something called as the irs uh, which checks on your taxes and making sure that taxes are being paid and all of this uh, and so they you know they contacted the ministry and said we need to check your taxes now it's now just because they did that it's not does not mean that uh, the devil is attacking them it is a normal you know procedure and it's okay they wanted to you know check the taxes of the ministry and they checked and everything was haywire right there were bills going to some random people ex additional amounts going to the pastors accounts and all of these things right and they asked him, why did you need 3 million or 4 million for in one month? Why did you need, and it's accounted as ministry. What was the ministry you did on, you know, example, August 2015? What was the ministry you did? You've got a bill for you know, 2 or 3 million. What was the ministry? Was there a conference? He had nothing to say. And it was, you know, I, I, I think there was some of those uh, sessions were recorded, but, you know, they must have been taken down uh, in the court. Uh, but he was compounding one lie after another lie after another lie. And eventually he knew that it's not going to take him anywhere. And towards the end, he was, you know, all his 
everything was out in the open. He had taken these additional money to use it for his own ministry, for his own gain, bought private yachts, bought private jets. Uh, and, you know, everything was just gone in a moment. Probably what he worked for, for many, many years, just gone in a couple of months. Everyone knew the church was closed down. The others were asked to go find different churches. He was, you know, uh, uh, under scrutiny. He had to pay back, pay the taxes. He had no way of paying it back. People tried to help him. And the ministry from thousands became zero. Why? Lack of wisdom. Papers were not set in, in the right manner. Accounting was not done in the right manner. Is his teaching good? Wonderful. Were there signs, miracles, and wonders? Yes, there was. Was he a wonderful teacher, preacher of the word of God? Yes, he was. He, he wrote many books. His books have sold millions of copies. People take, read it, are encouraged and blessed. But lack of wisdom had just got the whole ministry down to nothing. So in everything that we do, right, everything that we do, we must act out of wisdom. One of the things that I personally do, and I pray every day, every single day, every moment, is God, give me the wisdom to do whatever work has been assigned to me to do it effectively, right? I know I can do it. I need to prepare and you know go into the word and prepare or whatever task that I have to do as a pastor. But give me the wisdom to do it the right way. Give me the wisdom to speak the right way. There will be people who will come to you and you know uh, uh, share many personal things or difficult situations. We need the wisdom of God to answer them, right? There's this one time last week, somebody came and asked me, um, why is LGBT, why can't we be a lesbian or a gay and still believe in Jesus? I love the Lord with all my heart. But this is how I feel. What can you tell? And we need the wisdom of God. God, give me the wisdom. I can't just keep telling you know whatever I feel like. I need the wisdom from God to answer these questions. Then somebody else came and uh, asked me, you know, uh, why is it that you know uh, uh, you believe in pre-tribulation? Or why is it that Jesus did like, you know, said this this way? So people have a lot of questions, right? What about uh, speaking in tongues? Why is it like this? Or the gifts of the Holy Spirit, why is it like this? We need the wisdom of God. Here's the assurance that you and I have. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of wisdom. He gives it to us, right? And so we can ask God, God, give me the wisdom to handle this situation in the right way. Right? I think I've shared this this one time. Somebody from uh, this happened in Mangalore, and this couple suddenly they just turned, right? They turned against me and they said, you know, this, 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 he's like this, he's like this. They gave a whole list of things. I was so upset. I said, what is this? I was caring for them. I was praying for them, going, you know, going out of my way and as a pastor, did everything I can. And uh, now they turned against me. I was so upset. I said, you know, this is not right. I need to deal with this. But, I was so furious, but I wanted to, you know, really react that day. But then I thank God for the spirit of wisdom. I said, Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. That moment, the Holy Spirit said, keep your mouth shut and sit at home. Don't you speak a word. And I got this verse, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against it. So I said, okay, God. The enemy is coming like a flood now. You know I haven't done anything wrong. Now the spirit of the Lord, you raise up a standard against it. So I, there was a certain peace in my heart. And all of a sudden, I, I began to love them. I said, God, you bless them. Help them. Help them. Maybe they are going through some problem. 
and they are hurt and that's why they're putting all the anger on me they don't have anybody else to put the anger maybe they are going through a season of brokenness tiredness weariness or mentally they're getting you know they are a couple who are retired old age living alone their children are abroad maybe they are mentally alone they're feeling lonely uh, so all of a sudden that anger that hatred went away and there was this extra feeling of love or uh, you know kindness and care for them but i kept quiet i thought things will get better but it just got kept getting worse and all of a sudden you know it came to a point that you no know, i didn't do anything right things came to a point that they said you know we will we'll try to come or we'll go to another church but for now uh, you know i really appreciate this is what they said right really appreciate this church's pastor even though i don't agree, you know i may have got upset and angry uh, but i really appreciate he never defended he never you know anybody else would have come and said you know how can you see this? but he never defended so i really appreciate that maybe it was my mistake and he you know really, we had a heart to heart discussion that day and he said give me some time i don't know what's wrong with me uh maybe i'm going through something i don't know why i got upset i said it's all right you don't have to force yourself right so you see wisdom will help us to get out of situations lack of wisdom will make us get into a situation that will make things worse right and now i'm giving this example why because previous to this there were many times i've got upset and you know immediately said something and i realized that hey as a leader i should not right so we learn from experience as lobega said right it's from experience we learn from our experience. hey last time i did this things went bad this time lord help me to walk in wisdom right so each one of us please remember this right we may be very learned we may have the knowledge of great great revelations but we must walk in wisdom if we have a little bit of knowledge and walk in wisdom that is better than having a lot of wisdom a lot of knowledge and is walking in foolishness right so ask god pray to the holy spirit and say god give me the wisdom what should i do how should i speak how should i portray myself as a leader you know um one of the things i remember when i was in bible college was uh now uh, you no need to do this but this is just something that i did and it helped me right so there was this one when i joined bible college uh, i was focused i said okay god i want to learn your word nothing else right i've come here two years to learn your word i have to do this and i came fully prepared i was really excited and i decided to myself that i'm not going to waste time talking and chatting and gossiping with people because that is going to be there right and so uh, there was a time when i would never speak to anyone right uh, i never speak to anyone in my class so just sit and do my work just concentrate on you know and there was this one time when uh, you know we had boys and girls in our class so i would never talk to any girl just uh, i would never talk right uh, so there was this one time that somebody you know complained and said you know paul is telling this about this girl nobody in the class believed it nobody none of the teachers also believed it they said please go and sit in your place because we know what paul is first of all he doesn't talk and and then on top of that you're saying this we don't don't believe you see the reason i'm saying this is when we walk in uprightness with the wisdom of god people will know people will see it and they will recognize wisdom really elevates us right uh many a times many a times right uh Uh, in, in many seasons right many a times 
we we will have opportunities coming our way wrong opportunities but you got to run away from it got to run away from it say god give me the wisdom give me the grace right and you see joseph he ran away he ran away he left everything and ran away right that's wisdom and he knew i'm not going to get into this and so we as leaders must be wise right uh, uh, and the reason I'm spending a lot of time in this is because I know many, many leaders who have failed either sexual immorality or they've, you know, they've uh, they've gone into pornography, they've gone into, uh, you know, uh, adultery, fornication, or sometimes it's you know just this constant lying or this hatred for certain groups of people, right? Um, or their own marriage is breaking up because of no wisdom, right? Or the children hate the parents who hate them because they are always in church. Uh, none of this. Uh, so, so we must learn to walk in wisdom, right? If if you know your parents are correcting you, don't say, "Hey, I'm in Bible college. I know more than you." No, they're your parents, right? Uh, no matter how big we become, how great we become, and our achievements. Our parents and our loved ones always we need to respect them to love them we may not agree with everything but wisdom is god's command says love your father and your mother done deal what they say you may not agree to it but the wisdom of god is that we obey him right so each one of us let's let's do this right uh, uh, let's not fall into the traps of the enemy right my people perish because of lack of wisdom the enemy will come bring you know all these challenges and situations and opportunities in front of you you got to do the right thing ask the spirit of wisdom to help you right so next one d jesus combined his teaching with supernatural ministry right even when he taught and we've seen that, right? He took five loaves of bread, fed the thousands. He walked on water. He did wonderful, wonderful miracles. So basically, he was trying to say, hey, I practice what I preach. Imagine Jesus saying, hey, if you have faith as a mustard seed, if you tell this mountain move, it'll move. And then Jesus is not doing anything. What will they say? If I was one of the disciples, I would have said, first, you show me something. Right? I would have definitely asked. Right. You you show me show me how much faith you have. Show it to me, then you teach, or then you talk. But Jesus thought he 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 followed up his actions with supernatural. Right now, I'm not saying that uh, if if there's no supernatural, we should not teach and preach. No, we continue to teach and preach, but we must pursue the supernatural. Right, Jesus said without faith right if you have faith as a mustard seed then what did he do he walked on water he showed them hey see you can do it i can do it yeah peter said yes you can come on walk on the water peter walked on the water now a fisherman knows about walking on water right he knows the seas he knows how dangerous it is and he walked on water now people focus on always you know, oh, he, by the time he lo turned away and he began to sink, oh, Peter, he lacked faith. But we forget the part where he got off the boat and walked, no, till Jesus. He's the only person who walked, who expressed, what about the other 11 disciples? They were too scared. They were sitting in the boat. They were probably thinking, Peter, please, you, you, you know what's happening. You know that you can't walk on water. But he didn't listen. Right, faith is required in supernatural ministry, right? Uh, and and all of us are called for the supernatural ministry. All of us, right? So uh, when we prepare to teach, or we are listening to hear the word of God, or we are uh, you know maybe teaching somewhere, you can teach the word and also you know uh, prepare for the supernatural. Combine it with the supernatural. Don't say, oh, okay, you know, uh, I thought about uh, 
you know elijah and the uh, you know the supernatural work that so that is elijah now what what about me no remember the book of hebrews it says the old covenant was glorious but how much more glorious is the new covenant right the covenant that we are this side of the cross is much much more powerful than that side of the cross right so combine your ministry combine your teaching your preaching with a supernatural pursue it now it's not going to happen by a snap right it's not just snap okay god tell me now and god will tell us no it's a journey right we continue every day to grow in that right next one jesus spoke in a figurative language the figurative language was another important characteristic of christ's teaching he often used metaphors the word metaphor simply means figures of speech then he used exaggerations that's called hyperboles and parables let's read matthew chapter 16 and verse 11 yes one of us can read matthew 16 and verse 11 Matthew 16, verse 11. Matthew 16, Matthew 16 verse 11. 11. How is it that you do not understand that I speak is not to you concerning bread, that you should be aware of the living, living bread, living bread, living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Yeah. So he, he's saying here, thank you, thank you, uh, Abu Bakre. So it says here, um, how is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread, but be on guard against the East of the Pharisees? Now, before that, Jesus is explaining about the East, right? When you put a little bit of East in the dough, the whole dough is affected it's basically like putting one drop of poison in a clean glass of water the whole water is poison right so he's explaining this to the disciples the disciples uh, you know the pharisees are like this the sadducees you know uh they look good on the outside right they want to look good in front of people but there's they are like yeast figure of speech they're like yeast they when you put them into the door it just you know messes it up so be careful be on guard against the east of the Pharisees, right? So it's a figure of speech. He's not, he's not, uh, you know, saying they're carrying east and dough and walking around. No, he's talking in a figure of speech, right? Uh, and he's used this in many other places. Let's look at the next one, hyperboles. Uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 3. Yes, go ahead. Anybody can read that. Matthew 7 and verse 3. Matthew 7, verse 3. And why behold thou the mute? Matthew 7 that, and 3. Yeah. And why behold thou the mote that is uh, in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thy own eye? Mm. This is a common verse that we all use, no? somebody says hey you you know you didn't preach properly hey you don't look at the speck of dust in my eye look at the log of wood in your eye <laughs> right uh, it's a hyperbole right uh, meaning there was it's an exaggeration right uh, it's a uh, even even the whole like uh, the parable or uh, when jesus is saying you know uh, if you have seed if you have faith as a mustard seed you can move the mountain it's an uh, it's a combination of figure of speech and uh, a hyperbole. You can't if you have faith of a mustard seed. How can a mountain, a whole mountain, move aside, right? So, uh, so Jesus spoke in these ways, right? And he thought in these ways. He used, thirdly, he used parables. So, uh, so that's why his teaching was very effective. Right? One, he used figures of speech. Two, he used hyperboles, things that are you know something that is not possible like even the example of um it's easier for a 
rich uh, for a, a poor man to for no sorry it's easier for a rich man to enter the eye of a for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven now it's a hyperbole right a camel cannot enter the eye of a needle right so it was an exaggeration so there are many places that jesus did that and the most powerful of all of them were the parables right uh, when you think about jesus's teachings the first thing you think of is parables so jesus used different kinds of parables the word parable comes from the greek word parabol which means to cast alongside or it's an extended figure of speech in a story form right so uh, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning an earthly story with a heavenly meaning right now when we read the entirety of the new testament jesus ministry there were two kinds of parables or that he spoke about one was kingdom parables right talking about the kingdom of god right uh, and you'll see that all through in the book of uh, mark and Matthew, mark and luke uh, kingdom parables talking about the kingdom of god and then you got the regular parables talking about earthly elements uh earthly things like for example lostness right uh and the lost sheep the lost coin all all these are earthly uh needs of the people during that time right so why did the lord jesus use parables yeah it says here parables helps him it was illustrating truths and two to obscure truth from those whose heads were hard and unyielding right one is to illustrate the truth two is to obscure the truth from the heads of those who are you know they thought they knew everything right and mostly he was talking about the pharisees and the sadducees right who thought they knew everything about the scriptures now picture this the parable of the sower right jesus is giving this whole thing he's teaching the people there the disciples are probably sitting there wondering what is he saying and the others are there also listening to a nice story a man was walking he had seeds in his hand and then he threw the seeds some fell on thorny some fell on stones some fell here and it's a wonderful story we all like stories you no know, listening to stories it's a wonderful story but he ended that with you know bringing the truth out saying that's what a heart is a heart is the disciples later ask what did you talk about the parable of the sower we didn't understand anything and jesus says okay sit i'll explain to you and he begins to explain them to them right the seed is the word of god the, uh, the ground is the good ground and um, this is what so he explains the whole parable right so parables illustrate truth now while teaching and your preaching it's always it's, it's good right you will learn more on this uh, not sure if you have started with homiletics and uh, those uh, session those courses but uh, it's good to add you know stories things that people can relate to right so for example if you're teaching um, give a few examples give a few thoughts ideas or or some suggestions something that you have read about and so that is why in teaching we must you know my teacher used to tell me a good teacher is somebody who keeps god's word in one hand and god's world in another hand right now here's the thing i'm going to ask you a question right what do you think about uh the ukraine war What do you think about the Ukraine war? Now, imagine we don't know anything about it. Now, somebody in your church is going to come and ask you, "What do you think about the Ukraine war?" What are you going to say? I, I don't know. That's in Ukraine. No, don't worry. You come to church here. We can't say that, right? So, so we must be aware of things that are happening. You know, I remember the day when. you know the united states of america said uh at the president said we're going to make jerusalem the capital of israel 
I got goosebumps all over my body because I thought, wow, a direct prophecy already fulfilled. And then I was reading many articles and uh, some I went, I just came across this article where the Muslims are in talks with the Jews. Now Jews are very, very rich people, right? And so that land where uh, the tomb is, is according to them, it's David's land, right? But uh, the Muslims came and captured it and all of that. So the Jews, the Muslims are willing to negotiate terms with the Jews to buy it. Things are going forward. That. What is that? Why is it something important for us? Now, if we don't understand these things, we will not be, as teachers, we will not be able to grasp the meaning of these things. Now, why is it important? It's so obvious, right? The second temp the, the temple has to be rebuilt there, right? The Jews have to get back that property. The temple has to be rebuilt. Once the temple is rebuilt, you know, Revelations talks about how the Antichrist comes into power. He'll go and sit inside and said, he is the king. And then we know the whole story. Jesus comes, he reigns there. So that there should be a physical temple. And it's on that land itself. So prophecy is being fulfilled. Right? So we, we have to hold God's word in one hand and the word in another hand. Talking about science, and we're in the next month, uh, September first onwards, we're talking about faith and science, and uh, you know many questions there to talk about. But the point is, when we are teaching and preaching, we must be aware. Right? We must be aware of what's happening uh, around us, around the world, uh, world events, and also, like you know, don't get. Don't be fearful reading all these things and so our time is coming. No, we trust God's word. We trust in God. We know that God is taking care of us. He, he knows what's best for us. But as teachers, we must, you know, uh, put our mind into all of these aspects, right? So it's not easy uh, just to just say, okay, I want to be a teacher. There's a lot of preparation, a lot of things involved. So three examples of parables told by Jesus. Luke 15 contains three parables, right? And all these three parables have the similar meaning. There is the parables of lostness, right? So there are three, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, right? So he says the lost sheep, okay. He had 100, out of the 100, one went away, astray. So the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes searching for that one. So again, there is something lost and a seeker attempting to find something lost. And when he found it, there was uh, found what was lost. There was celebration and there was joy. The parable of the lost sheep is so wonderful, right? He leaves the 99, he goes finds that one and when he found it he puts it on his shoulder and comes back with joy now nowadays the shepherds i don't know what they're going to do nowadays shepherds if the sheep goes away they'll probably say okay it's okay leave it we have so many more or they say you know they beat the sheep and say how can you go you know you're supposed to be here right and sometimes as parents we do that to our children we must be very careful right there are many times i've spoken to people and teens they've shared with me you know they said uh, i just feel lonely i feel alone i feel i'm lost in this world of you know uh, so much that's happening this world of chaos world of confusion so much is happening, I feel lost. If you look at them, everything looks fine. I mean, they have a good family, they have friends, but they're just lost. So the Lord Jesus here, Christ is illustrating that in our lostness, he's willing to find us. He's willing to restore us back, and he celebrates for that. And he's willing to go to 
the extreme to bring us back into his kingdom right christ was illustrating god's attitude towards the sinners when they were found god is not saying oh finally you came back i told you no parable of the lost son the father doesn't say you came back you did what you had to do and came now what happened where's the property where's the money and look at you no nothing he says there's a celebration complete restoration right and the lost coin coin is lost and this, they the person is searching and searching and searching this coin they move everything in the house to search for that one coin and when it's found there's much rejoicing and i'm sure that when the lord jesus spoke of these it gripped the people's heart they would have thought oh how lost i am you know being in this place just going to these uh, temples offering sacrifices offering these uh, things that are meaningless to my heart and they must have thought i'm so lost without a savior and jesus again is bringing that whole thing you know a good teacher makes the their audience think and have questions at the end questions about their own life a good teacher will dig deep into a person's heart and bring out truth right uh and and that's what happens right so we must be willing to take the effort and you know now jesus used parables we can use stories we can use examples ask god for wisdom right uh, i was just uh, remember of this one time you know we used to go to colleges and uh, uh, and you know have this one hour of you know worship share a short message and end in about 15 minutes and um we went to this college a lot of muslims in this college and um there were about 300 odd students jam packed audience and they were all like you know talking to each other they were not interested they knew that you know they're going to come and sing and talk about god and so all of them were in their own world you know just distracted and talking and uh, you know nibbling at each other poking fun at each other and the two songs we sang two songs and i during the songs i saw that they were least bothered not interested at all i said god please give me the wisdom give me the strength to you know minister that lord you have to speak to them it was very very intimidating right they're all staring at you and they're all poking fun you know they're making passing comments and all of that and i remember that day uh, you know i had a video well, I think most of us have seen this video. Derek Redman was a runner uh, in the 1994. I think I may get the wrong here wrong, but it's the Olympics finals of the Olympics, uh, 400 meters uh, race, and he was, you know, uh, the most favored to win because he had win. He had won many, uh, uh, you know, uh, races before, and he was the fastest, and everyone knew it. It was probably that he's either going to go gold or silver. So he was ready for the race. And uh, you can go up on YouTube and check it, also the video there. So he goes ready for the race. He's running half the way. He has a hamstring. He falls down in extreme pain. And uh, he gets up and he begins to limp. And he tries to finish the race because he didn't want to end the race on a stretcher. So he begins to limp and cross and just, just walk and try to finish the race. And all of a sudden, a man comes out from the crowd and helps him to walk. And that was his own father. And he begins to cry. And the father saying, it's OK, don't worry. Let's finish this race together. They finish the race. And after they finish the race, up to date, nobody knows who won the gold for 1994 Olympics, 400 meters. Nobody knows. But everyone knows the person who came last. He fell and his father came. There were 30, 40,000 people in the in the whole stadium were clapping and honoring what he did. I just played that video. Right? After playing that video, it's a five minute video. After playing the video, I just said, see, we all fall down in life. And just a simple, you know, 
we all fall down in life you know just like how we fall it's all he could have chosen to go back home in a stretcher but he decided no i will stand up it was painful he began to walk and then the father came we all need a father and we all need more than a father we need god to help us simple thing Halfway down, all the girls are crying. They're weeping, and tears are falling. Everyone, are, you know, with the tissues and handkerchiefs, they're wiping. I said, "God, you're doing something here." And I said, after this, I want to ask people, you know, if you want to accept Jesus as your personal savior, come in front. And the line was a long line. The problem was they had to go to class the next session. So I said to the principal, you know, you know, is it okay if we can stay back? This is important. The principal said it's okay, we can stay back. And uh, you know, me and a few of us were there and we prayed over them. Right? All of them had a story to tell, but all of them were touched. Just it was not the preaching, not at all. It was just what they saw in that video. Right. So this is something that you know maybe all of you, if you're reaching out to people, colleges, youth, teens, use that video. It, uh, prayerfully use it. Say God, minister to people, and uh, I'm sure that will touch. And now on with YouTube, you can go and you can check on. You know, there's many things available, so you can uh, use these uh, tools. Uh, and you know, now the anointing is not on the video. The anointing is on on our prayer on the word that we you know uh, we need to be prepared to preach and to teach whatever right uh, the word of god and uh, use that as a source of our of our talk right and uh, finally last thing themes of other parables christ taught forgiveness generosity he talk about he spoke about humility um, who should, whoever wants to be first must be last and last must be first uh, judgment he spoke a lot about judgment he talked about the kingdom of God kingdom parables he talked about the law the Lord's return he talked about mercy prayer and so much more right so he didn't just stick to one topic which he liked but he he was very diverse he was able to minister to many people who had diverse problems difficult seasons or things that they were going through and uh, you know uh, he was able to minister and touch people's lives you see them their discussion questions i think i'll leave this open now how is it possible to be authoritative and loving at the same time yes anybody can share maybe some of you in leadership anybody can share how is it possible to be authoritative and loving at the same time. How do we do this? Feel free to share your thoughts. Yes, go ahead, Lubega. I think you should do, uh, you people, when you suppose, let me say, like I'm a leader in an institution and I have a staff of people we should do, sit with them and set rules and regulations ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wait for somebody to come late and then I set the rules of here. If you come late, you you get a deduction of 50, maybe 50 USD on your salary before. You should set rules and regulations before time and people are aware of what is going to happen in case of a breach of anything. And then there you stay a simple, cool guy. Rules will always work. You will be lovely to them and they will never say anything. You always be ahead of your game. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, yes. That is perfect. That's wonderful, Lubega. Uh, you know, have you know, sometimes we think, okay, no, God, no, God is above rules. No, God also follows rules. Read the book of Exodus. Oh my God. Read the book of Numbers. He goes on, he says, you know, you have to walk this way. God says, the tribe of Benjamin, you walk, the tribe of Judah, the tribe you walk this way, walk in this order. The person standing in front will carry the banner of the thing. And when you walk, walk in this way. Oh, so much. God has rules. God is a God of order. So wonderful. Thank you, Lubega. Yeah. Set certain rules as a leader. And 
let them know that these are rules that we want to follow so you're being authoritative and then you're also being loving by saying that you know it's good that we follow these rules uh it's for our benefit as well right so that's wonderful yes uh zeli says if we lean on the holy spirit uh he's a spirit of wisdom he will enable us yes thank you uh sid says sometimes i try to share jesus with my college mates but they don't take jesus as a son of god like mostly most of them are muslim they say that jesus was a prophet and a son of god what should i do in these please share your opinion they say that we are the genuine of yeah uh, now see uh this is a huge topic uh uh, uh said but basically what see what, uh, like we studied in lifestyle evangelism also right we, we are called to share and there are people you know the parable of the sower uh sometimes people will take it sometimes people will the enemy will come and uh, steal it or it's not so put in good ground uh, but our responsibility is to continue to minister right you continue to teach continue to you know, just tell them uh, don't be afraid or don't be ashamed right now especially uh, said now during this season be wise in the way you do it uh, but rely on the power of God rely on God's power and God will you know really help you so uh, of course there's lots to say uh, but just continue doing it the seed is sown if the seed is sown it will bear fruit right uh, why next question why would Jesus obscure the truth from uh, uh, you know by his parables why did Jesus do that why do you think Jesus did that he obscured the truth why didn't he just tell everyone you know this is how it is any thoughts why did he obscure the truth from people? Why did he use parables? Why can't he just say things and say it normally? You know, I, I, this is what I'm going to do. But yes, yes, Sid. Sir, uh, like you were asking, like why Jesus used the parables? Like, uh, according to me, the answer would be like, already in isaiah and other books the prophecy was done like a uh, messiah will come he will use parables to teach so like i think it was like because of the prophecies which were done yes that's yes that's that's one of the reasons thank you so much Sid. yes uh zeli says he was creative god so he was full of wisdom thank you zeli um uh, yes uh, one of the main reason was to fulfill prophecy but two was also to uh, you know, the obscure the truth from those who felt they were they knew everything, right? Because sometimes people who knew everything they don't want to hear. And the Bible also says that you know another prophecy was they will hear, but they they have ears, but they don't hear. Uh, they cannot conceive the things of God. Uh, but in some places, Jesus very plainly just spoke the truth. It's not like he was being suspicious every time. No. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am, before Abraham was, I am. You come to me and I will give you rest. He was open about it, right? Uh, but there were times he spoke in parables at certain places, at certain, you know, when he saw the, uh, the audience, he was able to make that decision, right? So, right. So any other questions, any thoughts? Uh, we have a minute left, but if not, we can close in prayer. All right. Okay, so hope today was a good time. I really enjoyed uh, this learning, and I have so much to take from this as well. Uh, so we'll close in prayer, and uh, yeah, any one of us would like to close? Yes, anybody please close in prayer. Yeah, go ahead, Sid. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you. As we have learned from your word, Lord, about preaching and teaching, Lord, whatever we have learned, Lord, should not be wasted, but it should be used effectively for your kingdom expansion and all glory be given to you, your Lord. Lord, whatever we do, Lord, whatever we say, Lord, all the glorify should be given to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask everything and God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Sid. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you next Thursday.
God bless. God bless.